very windy today. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so I apologize in advance for the sound quality of this video. This is the nine and a quarter inch Schmidt Cassegrain dew heater, which bolts directly to the corrector plate of the Schmidt Cassegrain. Unlike your conventional straps that go around the outside, I am expecting the performance to be better. So we'll see, maybe I'll do a test or not, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to do an install video on this. I'm gonna cut it open and, uh, and we'll have a look at what's in there very quickly. And I, it's not really a revealing unboxing thing. I don't do that. Um, so it will be an install video. Everyone else has done one on this. So I'm gonna do one too. It's my ride. Okay, that's what we've got inside. Um, that's the dew heater. And that's very important um, to read that little tag, which means read this. Um, and we'll, sh we'll see why. And they've got uh, this cover here, which basically goes over the corrector plate to keep uh, you from screwing it up and, and putting a hole through your corrector plate with a screwdriver. Basically, you've got to put uh, take the screws out of the existing one and, and put them back onto this one, but we'll go through that process. Um, that's basically, it's an RCA style um, connector, so it should be able to suit any dual heater uh, heating system with that. And uh, cable management. Anyway, let's get going. Oh, instructions of course. Okay, so um, the first step is to make sure your telescope is vertical and it's just straight up. Um, the reason being is when you remove the bracket, the old existing plate that goes around the outside of the corrector plate, there's eight screws here. Um, you don't want that corrector plate to shift in the slightest. You want to ha it has to not move at all. It's very windy, isn't it? It's freaking me out a bit because I've got the hatch open. But anyway, I'll keep struggling along with this one. Step two, remove the cover. Oh, I've already done that. Step three, include, put the paper on. So this is where the paper goes on. Luckily, I've already pre-cleaned this in the last episode or my last video. So I've got most of the grit and grime off it. It's probably not the best way to be cleaning this with vertical position. Just to be sure. Okay, step four. Use a Phillip head screwdriver to carefully unthread and remove the screws that connect to the telescope corrector. So there are the eight around there. This is the freaky part. Wow, they're not, they're not in there very tight. Well, that one wasn't. Neither was that one. It's a bit of a worry. I would have thought they'd be a little bit tighter than that, considering they're holding in the corrector plate. Maybe they don't need to be. Carefully remove the retaining ring from the telescope also removing the gasket material ring underneath the plastic retaining figure. So, carefully, still stuck there. Still stuck here. Okay, these screws are quite long. Must be a notch somewhere. Get that past the notches. You just have to kind of slightly bend it out of shape just to get it out. Now that gasket has come off with this, so it's stuck to the back of that. So um, let's follow the instructions from here on. Okay, so next step is to take off also this gasket ring here. Right. Step six, carefully re 
Carefully place the dew heater ring where the retaining ring was previously. Orientate the dew heater ring so that the compliance label on the ring is just to the right of the telescope's dovetail when looking at the front of the tube. See figure six. Okay, so figure six. Well, let's get it on first, then we'll worry about orientation. Put in my tag. Now, there's some notches in this one, and I take it that is to um, so that you can get them over. Or it's the other way. Beautiful. Now, to orientate. Okay, so the compliance label is down there near the dovetail. I just got to try and find out. Oh, there we go. I think I've lined up the screws. So, apparently, that's how it's got to be. So who can argue with the powers to be, right? Okay, what's the next step now? Next step is carefully place the dew heater ring where the retaining ring was previously orientated dew heater ring so that the compliance label on the ring is blah, 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 done that. Reinstall the screws, remove previously only finger tighten initially. Then when tightening the screws with your Phillips head screwdriver, use a cross pattern. Okay, so a cross pattern like you do on a changing a wheel. So let's get to that. What's going on here? Whoops. Not easy to line up these screws, and this wind's not making it making it a bit of a challenge for me too. Okay, this is a bit trickier, trickier than I thought, mainly because I can't see where the hole is. Got him. I'll find that one I dropped now. All right, I found him. Okay, so now tighten it in a cross pattern. So tighten that one. And back to the instructions. Only light and tighten screws at first, which I've done. So the head of the screw is just above the retain ring when all the screws are lightly installed. Again, full final tightening of the screws. Again, cross pattern. Make sure the screws are firmly tightened but not over tightened. So I think I'll just give them a little bit more. Start from here again. Firmly but not over tightened. Certainly tighter than when they come out. All right, next. Remove the paper, installation shield. Installation is now complete. When the dew heater ring is not in use, the power jack and thermistor jack stay clipped to their plastic storage clips, which are connected to the ring itself. See figure eight. Get you out of the road. Don't want you scratching my plate. All right. I will reorientate my telescope now to do the rest of this, which would be the cable management and hooking it up. Okay, so that's the cable management system which clips on here. Then these, I think, clip onto these. But I don't know. Or do they? Aha. Uh -huh. How they go, they slide them in first, I think it's the key, and then they'll clip on. 
Beautiful. Now I've got so much extra peripheral crap around here, I don't know how, if that's gonna be in the road or not, but I guess I'll find that out later. Okay guys, uh, installation complete. Um, I'm done now. I saved, I spared you the pain. I actually went and I took this all off again, put it on. Uh, and the reason for that was I rotated anti-clockwise. Suited me better because I've got the, uh, the clips and everything that go on for my ultrasonic sensors. And for those who I don't know, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, there are sensors that go on here to help control the position of my observatory roof. And I've got a video on that on my um, automation series of videos if you want to watch that. Um, that might be of interest to you, but um, anyway, that was one of the reasons I did it. And I also struggled a little bit uh, with these lugs here where the dust cap goes on. Um, when these connectors are tucked in here inside their home position, when they were rotated more clockwise, I found they were too close to these lugs. I struggled a little bit getting them on. And I noticed that the instructions were for the C8 model. I don't know if that made any difference, but um, anyway, I've relocated it anti-clockwise and I've hooked it all up and hopefully everything is going to be uh, hunky-dory from here on. <laughs> So uh, I was almost about to um, publish this video, and uh, but the night before I was out, I'm capturing the string of pearls, girls at the moment. I was doing my first few test shots and noticed all these little notches on my stars at the end of the stars, and I hadn't seen that before. And I knew that the dew heater was the only thing that was new. Um, and I thought maybe it could be the cable management sticking out in the corner of the corrector and getting picked up and maybe deforming the stars but then I remembered I got a message from my last video uh, from a Doug from Astro AF and he mentioned that um, he had trouble with deformed stars uh, caused from overheating so um, I went back and had a look at his video to see comparisons and sure enough, um, they were pretty much the same thing that I'm seeing. I'll put a link in the description below to Doug's video because he goes into a lot more depth than I do here. And also don't be turned off by the dew heater itself. I think if anything, it's way too efficient. If you've got a dew heater controller, you won't have any problems. You just need to turn it down and find your optimal temperature. That was my old uh, W and W Astro um, strap that I've had and it's done me very well for the last four years and it's still working and who knows maybe I'll be using it again if this doesn't perform but I can't see why it wouldn't. Um, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the uh, next video.